There is none other like you, Lord. Let nothing stand between our worship to you. Lord, empty our hearts, empty our minds. Just give you glory for who you are. Lord, I know there's needs in this place. I felt it when I walked in here. Lord, we just ask that you have your will in this place. Lord, if any distractions need to be removed, Lord, let's take this time to just focus our attention on you.
felt like you needed a friend. Or maybe you felt like you just needed some advice from your father, but you couldn't, you couldn't get that in that moment. If you've ever been in that place, it's amazing to know you can just kneel your knees down and ask God for everything you need. You can pour your heart out to him. You can ask him for advice. And he always moves in those situations. He truly is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He truly is the father that can be there when no one else can be there. And for that, I'm so thankful. I've got a friend Closer than a brother There is no judgment Oh, I lost I've got a friend And he is my strength He is my portion With me in the valley With me in the fire it's with me in the storm Let all my life Testify Hallelujah We are not alone It's God is sufficient So come if you're needing forgiveness or healing Mercy is enough Oh, this is our hope Cause the cross it has spoken And death is no more Christ is the Lord This is our hope
send us. What a father, what a friend, what a savior he is. Hallelujah. We are now. a whole he's asking us to do something different and it really boils down to kind of even this morning it boils down to that part to where we say to one another am I willing to extend my hands my arms to him in surrenderance and say God I give you my all that's where it has to start We've got a group of individuals here that will say I will give you my all. And not just say it, but mean it from our hearts and from our lives. Then God's going to begin to speak things into our lives that we maybe have never done before. It may feel uncomfortable. It may feel like that we can't do it. It may feel like that, why me? Or I'm not good enough. Or there's several reasons that we will give. But when it comes right down to it, it's not about us. It's not about what I can accomplish in myself. It's not about what I can do in me. But it's about me being yielded to the power in which He can accomplish through me. Did you know our Heavenly Father can empower us to become what He wants us to be? Anybody believe that with me this morning? He can empower us. He can give us the strength. He can give us what we need to accomplish things that we never dreamed that we could do before. Things that we had no idea that we could accomplish. Because we've been told what we've been told. Or we've believed what we believe. Or we feel like that whatever it is, we can't accomplish that. But I'm here today to tell you. Before we go into this message, this isn't the message yet. This is just kind of a treat opener. I tell you, before we go into this message this morning, God has purpose for your life. There's individuals and lives He has for you to minister to. There's souls that He wants you to reach that only you can reach. 
because of who you are and who He's created in you. So as we go into that and continue on with Jesus' commands, let's go ahead and read our scripture that we've been reading now for a while to where it said, Jesus and Peter, Yep. <laughs> oh, I love it when my tang gets tangled. <laughs> oh. You know, our Lord is humorous, right? If you don't believe that, just look around sometimes. Uh, especially look forward. Anyway, uh, kind of, anyway, funny looking guy. But. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And of course, teach these new disciples to obey the commands. And that's where we've been for several weeks now. And I promise you, it's, we're, we're about there, okay? But as we look at this, we know the first and second greatest commands is first, love the Lord our God with all of our heart. With everything that's within us. You know, if we have that, if we love the Lord with all of our heart and everything within us, it begins to change our lives right there. That begins to do a huge change in our lives. And of course, love your neighbor as yourself. And not just love your neighbor, but love one another. Look at your neighbor and says, I have to love you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I enjoy it. Okay, say, tell you, I enjoy it. Go ahead, say, I enjoy it. There you go. And then the next thing we learned is we must pray for our enemies. And of course, one version says, those who persecute us. And another one says, those who hurt us. Oh man, this, it gets tough right here, Larry. It gets tough right here. Yeah. 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 It gets really difficult right here when we pray for those who hurt us, because what we really want to do is we want to retaliate. Is there anybody here that feels like prayer the first time someone hurts you? Ah, oh, yeah, okay. I'll be praying for you, brother. I'm glad you are a man of God beyond me, because the first thing in my mind is not necessarily prayer. The Lord has to bring that back to my memory and help me say, Lord bless him. Because the first thing in my mind a lot of times is, blow them off the road. You know what I mean? And of course, he asks us to repent when we've been the way we've been. And we know we have sinned. By the way, in case you didn't know it, sin is disobedience. I want to say that again because a lot of times when we say the word sin, we have these labels of this, 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 and this, this. And, oh, I'm, I don't do any of those things. But we forget about obedience. Have I done what the Lord has asked me to do? If I haven't, then I've sinned against my Heavenly Father. Wow. And then we went to believe that Jesus is in the Father. That they are one. And of course, we took up our cross and we followed the Lord. And actually even did that last week with the missionary. Well, today you're going to love this because today is beginning to wrap it up. And then we have one more command that we're going to be going through as far as these commands that the Lord has given us. But this one here, you're going to love. Are you all ready today? Everybody psyched up? Ready to go? Please tell me, Pastor, so I can go home. Go and make disciples. Come on, Richard, help me out. Come on up here.
Richard's going to help me out this morning. Uh, he's going to be the one I'm discipling today. Okay? That doesn't ever happen. But today we'll play like it's happening. Okay? It's been happening for a year. It's been happening for a year. Okay. All right. Richard and I, we've been, we've been to, together talking about Christ for over a year now. And the Lord's been doing some things in your life. And in fact, I've seen some cool things happen. Now I know you're still Richard. And I know that we have things we deal with and we're going through. And we have things we're always growing in, right? Well, I know as we've been going through this whole process, Richard, and I've been going over these commands with you, you know, maybe not in this kind of an order in this way, but we've, we've talked about these things. We've, we've communicated about them as God wanted us to do. And, of course, I know that each one of these commands, you, you, you're living right now. I mean, you love the Lord with all your heart. You love it. You try to love your neighbors best you can with His help and strength, right? Yes. And, and you even try to love us. Sometimes. Sometimes, okay, so God has to help us. And, of course, I know there's times that we do pray for our enemies, and there's times that we need to continue to pray for those who hurt us. I understand that. And we've talked about all these, even taking up the cross and following, following Christ. So now, Richard, here's the big one I'm going to ask you to do as we've been doing this discipleship process. I want you to go and I want you to make a disciple. Okay? Go ahead. Thank you. This is the example that's, that's given here today. And it's not that, it's not because I'm the pastor that this is going to happen. It's not that the pastor is the one that makes all the disciples. But what's going to happen now is Richard is the example of this message this morning to where we are to go and make disciples. Say, that's me. Keep on keeping on, brother. The Lord wants us to make disciples. So we're going to read this again. Jesus, and co Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, this is what I don't necessarily see happening in the church world overall. What I see most of the time happening is discipleship happening just within the church, like in a class setting or in the settings to where you have a group of people and you're going through this process of discipling. Instead of the church being sent out as a church, and each one grabbing one, each one taking one, grabbing them up and beginning to work in their life of sharing Christ and beginning to share these commands. And not only sharing these commands, Larry, because that's one thing for us to build a friendship and begin to have a relationship with one another to where we begin to do that and we're talking about the Lord and loving on the Lord. But then the next thing that we do is there's a day to where we say, now it's your turn. To go and make a disciple. You see. If the church was to do that. The missionary was telling me. Sunday. I believe it was within 30 years. Everyone would know about Christ. He did some numbers. Facts. And what I mean by that. Is if. Marie. Marie shares Christ with someone, and they share Christ with someone. And each one of us does that. It, the multiplication pans out to where in a short amount of time, everyone would know about Christ. Because we're connected in so many different ways. If you don't believe me, in Oregon, when Peggy and I was waiting on uh, her mom to get off the plane in Portland, Oregon, We've seen someone get off the plane from Hartville. I went up as Eileen Wynn. I don't know if you know or not, but I went up, give Eileen Wynn a big old hug, you know, welcoming her and to Portland, Oregon. And uh, my sister-in-law, 
she so leaned over to Peggy and said, who's he hugging on? Oh, it's Eileen Wynn. She's from Hartville. What I mean by that is this. A little community like Mountain Grove, a little community like Hartville, a little community that we are, we may think, well, how are we going to touch the world? It's because we're connected everywhere. We're connected everywhere. We're connected all over the place as we travel and go. I mean, we have Florida represented here. You guys have great many ties in Florida. You're there often. You know what I mean? Of course, Matt, he travels all over the country. He, you don't know where he's going to be next, you know? But what I'm saying is as we, as we go through this process, is he, if each one of us would truly take to heart what the Lord is wanting to do in His church body as a New Testament church, it would not be long, but what we would see many come to know Him and not just know Him, but not just know about Him, but know Him. Because it's one thing to receive Christ, but it's another thing to walk along with someone as they grow in Christ. You see, what the Lord's wanting to prepare us as a church to do is when someone comes to the Lord, they're not just left by themselves. But we as a church body, God lays on one of our hearts or several of our hearts to grab them up and begin a discipleship process. And maybe not even at the front. In fact, the coolest thing would be is most of the salvations happening out with you. Whew, I could get excited right now. And you're bringing them to church saved as you're discipling them. Now, you see what I mean by not being normal? Because that's not normal, is it? But I believe it's scriptural. I believe it's what the Lord wants to do because let's look at it again. Therefore, Richard's been my example this morning. Richard, now it's your turn to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You say, wait a minute, can he baptize? He's not a pastor. What does the Word say? In fact, there's been many times during a baptismal that someone was walking with someone else and they'd, they would say, hey, I want... Them to baptize me, I'd say, hey, I'll get out of the tank. That's great. I love it because that's scriptural. It's not necessarily what happens a lot of times, but it's scriptural. Wouldn't it be a cool concept if the church lived by God's word? I mean, would that not be cool? It's like, yeah. Yeah. New concept, right? Something brand new, fresh off the press. Never heard it before. But you've heard it here this morning. The church living according to God's word. And I'm not making fun. I know we're laughing. But, but when it comes right down to it, church, is time. The time is coming close. The end is coming near. And we need to be about our Father's business. And so what my purpose is, what God has called me to do, is to equip you to be able to accomplish His will. That's what the Scripture says my purpose is. This is a direct command like that of a parent who would command their child to get out of the street. In fact, according to God's Word, there is no plan B. I heard it as I had it, was with a bunch of ministers the other day. I heard it said, and I wanted to say something, but the Lord shut my mouth because it would have come, around, come across wrong. I mean, it was the right words, but the wrong timing. But as I was listening, all of them were saying, discipleship is the hardest thing to do in a church. And here's what was said. We've tried this discipleship plan. We've tried this discipleship plan. We've taught this class. We've done that class. And the reason it's so hard is because we're not doing it God's way. You see, in my heart, in what I see in God's Word, and I could be wrong if I am, please help me, 
But according to what I see in God's word, discipleship is not supposed to be a class. Discipleship is supposed to be a lifestyle. I want to say it again. Discipleship, according to what I see in God's Word, is not supposed to be necessarily a class. Now, you can have a newcomer's class. You can have different classes of teaching. I'm not saying you... Get rid of all that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying discipleship as a whole, according to God's Word, is not a class. Discipleship is a lifestyle. And discipleship is supposed to be, according to what I read here, the body. And of course... Yes, I'll do mine too. But it's all of us reaching out. It's all of us discipling someone. It's all of us doing what God has told us to do and how we are, who we are, to disciple those who are in and around us. Now you say, well, I can't do that. I I can't do that, Pastor. How many here can talk? Okay, um... Some can't hear because nobody. (laughs) Oh, did that come out? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sometimes those thoughts just come out. You know, forgive me, please. How many here can talk? Come on now. Every one of us can talk, right? How many here has someone they can talk to seriously? I mean, you can talk to that person seriously. Maybe not everybody. Maybe, in, maybe not in front of the stage. You may freeze up and not be able to talk here. But there's somebody you can have a serious conversation with, right? You can disciple. Because discipleship needs to and does happen through a friend relationship. And I'm giving you all the tools because all you have to do is teach them the commands, right? That's all you have to do is teach them the commands that the Lord's given us. That's what it says to disciple them. But you say, well, I can't do that, Pastor. Well, I've got a hope for you. The hope is found right here. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. You'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Now, I want to point out something here as we're reading this, and it's something the missionary told me Sunday, and I hadn't really ever thought about it when we was at lunch. He said, when it says Jerusalem here, you've got to remember something. When he said that you could be a witness in Jerusalem, that was where they killed Jesus. I hadn't really thought about that, but that's a cool thing to think about because when he's saying, you can be my witness in Jerusalem, he's saying, you can go back where they crucified me and tell them about me. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to give you the strength to be my witness all over the world, wherever you live, even right here. You can be my witness. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. In fact, once when he was eating, Christ, with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. One of the things I love about our church is that we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We desire God's presence to fill our lives and to fill our church. We want Him to empower this body and we want Him to empower us. And that power is not just to see things happen, but that empowerment is to change our hearts and our lives and give us the strength to be able to talk to those who are around us. The problem is this. A lot of times we feel like we've got to do it a certain way. Kind of like there's been hundreds of books written on how to witness. Hundreds of books. Hundreds of classes on how to witness. But there's one class that we don't teach. And that's you. How many here is different? Uh, Raise your hand because you're all different. Every one of you. I'm different. We're all different, right? 
The cool thing about that is God is the one who created you. And He wants to use you as you are with your differences to be able to be a witness for Him. Now, when He fills you with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, He's going to give you the way to do it if you would just yield to Him. You will be able to talk to people about the Lord because you will feel His presence on you and the timing of when they're going through something. Let me pray for you. That's the start of being a witness, right? Because right there you said you're a believer. And as you build that relationship deeper and you have the opportunity, you can actually speak life into those people because of your relationship. You can begin to tell them about those commands without having to do them in order and list them in order. But you can help them to understand those commands through your lifestyle and also through speaking with them in a relationship. Kind of like, Richard, did we go through this process in a class or did we kind of do it as life came up? As life came up. I mean, many times Richard come by the house and we'd just be talking. And as we're just talking, the Lord would drop something in my spirit and I would just begin to, and I'd say that. And it was, oh, wow, I hadn't thought about it that way. That's discipleship. So many times we feel like, oh, I've got to have this map. No, we need to know His commands, and then we need to be filled with His Spirit and let life happen. Let God begin to flow through us naturally. Let His Spirit begin to flow through us naturally, and we begin to be, be His witness wherever we go. I never will forget when we was, uh, went out to Oregon a long time ago, and we was flying back from Oregon, and of course, the plane seats were kind of small, but anyway, Peggy set me in the middle because there was another guy right here, and she was over here. But we was flying back, and me and this guy began to talk. We just had a couple-hour flight, okay? It wasn't very long. But we began to talk, and he was on his way, way to a sales meeting or something. But we began to talk. Peggy looked over and, and seen him tears coming down his face. And she hit me like that and said, what did you say to him? I was just sharing Christ with this man. And how I was sharing Christ was, I wouldn't tell him, buddy, you better get your life saved. You're going to hell. No, I didn't do that. But what I did is I began to share with him what Christ had done for me and how much he loves me and how he's blessed me. And say, he loves you too. Because you see, everybody we're in and around, how many going through something? Come on now, every one of us face things in life, right? If we work and live and breathe, we face stuff, right? Even sometimes when we go fishing, our stuff breaks. Isn't that right, Jerry? We, we face things. <laughs> anyway, we won't go there. But what I'm saying is we, as we live life, things are going to happen, and people live life Without Christ, things are happening to them as well. But guess what? We have an answer to help give them peace. We have an answer to help give them comfort. We have an answer that can actually heal. We have an answer and someone who can actually make a difference. We have someone that can give them even hope. Right? And in all those things, in all those things, what the Lord wants us to do is be who we are and just begin to live our lives full on for Christ and allowing Him to flow through us. But it happens this way. It happens this way. In fact, worship team, go ahead and come. It happens this way. Hold on a second. It happens this way. It happens this way to where we yield entirely and completely to Him. In fact, let's go back here. It happens right here. You see, until we get the first command down, the number one, love the Lord God with all of our heart with all of our soul and everything within us. 
If we don't have that one first, we're not going to be able to do the rest of it. But with that, it's, Father, use me as you will and desire. Use me as you will and desire. Use me as you will and desire. You see, a lot of times when I speak about these things, people begin to say, you just don't know me, Pastor. And they may not say it out loud. But in their minds, they're saying, you just don't know me. It's true, I may not know everything about you, but my Father does. Because He's the one who created you. And He's the one who's given us His Word. My Father knows you. Your Father knows you. Your Heavenly Father knows every part of you. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows all your quirks and all the good things. He knows every hair on your head, how many you have or how few you have. Don't look over there. Oh, sorry. Couldn't help myself. Since I said something, I had to look. (laughs) He knows every part of you, though. He knows you. In fact, as I was getting ready to put my socks on this morning... I got my Sasquatch socks on this morning. It says, believe in yourself. Believe in who God has created you to be. Tell your neighbor, you were created with purpose in mind. Go ahead and tell I want to finish here. <laughs> Would you stand with me? I love our church. <laughs> We're different, unique. Father, as we come before you and we stand before you this day, each one of us has a decision to make. I pray that everyone decides to yield to you completely and wholly. I pray that each one will begin to see that you have everything that they need to become what you're asking of them. And Lord, that you want to fill them to overflowing with the power and the ability to be your witness. And to be able to not just witness, but also be that person who can disciple. Now, Father, all I pray is that we receive it. In Jesus' name.